Hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for yet another episode of Hull City Career Mode here on FIFA 17. Today, again, another three games for you potentially, although we are going into the January transfer window, which to be honest with you, I don't feel massively prepared for. We've got one game in the EPL before we move into January though and that is on the fringe of December, being against Norwich City. We then move into January, we've got a game against Burnley and an FA Cup tie against Yeovil Town, but um, yeah, we need to start really identifying identifying some uh, some transfer targets and to be quite honest with you I don't feel as if much needs to be done with this squad as things stand we we'll probably have to bring in a center back because Curtis Davies is starting to decline and there may be one other sort of depth player but there's not really too much that I need doing to this squad so if you've got any suggestions for center backs to buy then drop them in the comments section because that could prove very useful and if there's any other younger sort of depth players that you want me to buy then drop those in the comments section as well would you believe that going into this episode, Vincent Cozielo is the top scorer in the Premier League. The first player to get to double figures, he's on 10 goals. As a central midfielder, that is ridiculous. And just to emphasise how good this season for Vincent Cozielo has been, he's top of the assists list as well. Like, this is beyond a joke. It's absolutely incredible. I don't think we've ever had a start to a season for a player like this before. So just before we get into any games, you guys voted for Marvin Stefaniak as your player of the episode for the last episode of this series, which means he'll be playing in every single game of today's video. We're also at risk of losing some players here due to their contract expiring as we, of course, now moving into January. A lot of them, though, are, are Hull Originals, but a lot of them are players, or a few of them are players that don't really play at all. I am willing to give Snodgrass and Audrey Barjo a new contract. I definitely want to give a new contract to Moses Oda Barjo. Robert Snodgrass, we're definitely going to offer a new contract to 40k a week and one year contract length with important first team player. That should be absolutely fine. Curtis Davies, what sort of wages is he wanting? He's only wanting a 4k increase, so we can do that. That's absolutely fine. 35k a week. He's good to have around the club for experience purposes, really. Although I'm not going to specify his squad role because it's not going to be crucial. First game of the episode then comes against Norwich. Now, it's a pretty strong side for this game, but the bench is very weak and that's because we've got another game against Burnley I do believe literally in two days from now so I'm hoping to use these players now and then any players that don't make it into the side the likes of Ndidi can be fully rested for the game against Burnley. So then time for this first Premier League game of the episode live at Carrow Road obviously the first time we faced Norwich I do believe in this series because they were promoted from the championship in season one along with Newcastle and Sheffield Wednesday and this game as you can see is a tale of two teams the best team in the league in terms of scoring goals and the worst team in the league. We've been in good form recently we've managed to overturn that blip that we had really a few episodes ago where we lost about three games in a row we've managed to overhaul that and we're now in decent form we'll be hoping to continue that here against Norwich too it then comes Robbie Brady on the attack, on the attack even, against Linus Valkvist. he's actually gone past the Swede here as well Son Just is there there's a man in the middle and it's in the back of the net and that was as simple as you like from Norwich I was expecting someone really to be marking, I think, Stephen Naismith in the middle. There was someone marking him, but they just didn't get tight enough. I think it was actually Wyland Cyprian in the end. Oh, it was Andrew Robertson. Just didn't get goal side of his man, allowed a simple header for Naismith. It's just poor defensively. I'll tell you what, our passing has been absolutely shocking. I don't think we've strung more than four passes together so far. Here's Cozielo, who just gets muscled off the ball. It's through, though, to Hernandez. Can he finish? It's going to fall to Cozielo, who puts the ball wide. Oh, dearie me, Vincent. Now to Hernandez. He's challenged as well. Norwich are just absolutely camped on their penalty area. It's so hard to break them down. But I completely understand as well. Like, I would do, you know, I would do the same thing if I was them. Put that centrally in towards Cozielo, who can go for the strike. Good save from John Ruddy. Now it's out to Michael Keane. To Antep. That's a good turn from Antep. He goes for it, but it's saved by Ruddy. Such a poor shot. And that is really the story of the first half. This is a much brighter start to the second half. Stefaniak with the shot. Good effort. Good save from Ruddy. That's what I like to see. We've already reacted in this second half. Already looking much better. Oh, brilliant challenge there from Afori. Now it's Antep, who's got pace. He should be able to exploit that. Through to Cozielo. He Oh, and he went for it. He went for it. He couldn't quite decide what I wanted. And Cozielo doesn't get there, for goodness sake. I wanted a pass. Um, to just square it to Hernandez and he's fake shot it and the ball comes back to him empty net and he just doesn't he just can't head it that's ridiculous now to a four he threw to Hernandez can he get there he should have been able to at least try and slide 
but doesn't. We're carving them apart, but again, it's just it's just CPU end product at the moment. I'm doing what I want to do, but the AI aren't doing it for me at the moment, which is really frustrating. Oh my god, what is, what is this? Is this, honestly, this actually feels like I've got at least like 90 pass error on the, on the sliders. I don't know what is going on, but this is just ridiculous. Good ball there from Antep to find Ruznak. The substitute goes for the shot. That, how, what has been brought down? That must have been, there must have been a touch on the ball from the defender. That looked like a penalty to me, but I will give the ref the benefit of the doubt and just say there was a touch on the ball. Oh my, I just give up. I actually fully, what is that? What is this? What is this? What is this game? What has happened to my players? Where, where did their brains go? And that is the end of the game. That is the most frustrating game I have ever played on this on this game. Everything I tried just failed. Cause Yalo, it, I mean, pff, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know where, he left his brain at home this morning, clearly. I, I, I mean, it's a loss. Well, well played to Norwich. They didn't have to play very well to win the game, but you face what you're up against, don't you? It's not their fault we played terribly. I've never seen someone give the ball away as many times as I saw Cause Yalo give the ball away. That was such a frustrating game. Right, well, for the love of God, let's hope it doesn't get any worse than that. I don't feel as if it can ever get worse than that performance. Let's leave that in the past. We're now away up from home against a Burnley at Turf Moor. Right, so the plan of action for this game is to just hopefully we get kickoff and we can just bed ourselves in and get some confidence back in the passing because I don't have much faith in the players when it comes to passing at the moment now. The squad is very, very different as well going into this one because a lot of players are tired, but also because a lot of players were terrible in that game. Vincent Cozzielo has been dropped for both reasons. Here's our squad. Again, a lot of changes. Bailey, Rusnak, Mason, Ndidi, Maguire, Odubarjo, all into the side. Again, a fairly weak bench, but there are a few players that could come off it and make a difference. Get the afterburners on, Marvin. That's what I need from you. Put a ball into the box. He's gone for it. It's quite close towards Eaton, but I just needed someone there at the back post. There's Ndidi through for Odu Barjo. Matt, he's been brought down. That is a stonewall penalty every day of the week. And it's that man again. It's Ben Me. He was sent off after five minutes last time we played Burnley as captain. But Odu Barjo wins the penalty and it'll be taken by Abel Hernandez. Don't appear to have the arrow this time, which is quite interesting. And it is taken, but it goes in anyway. We take the lead. Abel Hernandez scores for Hull City to give us the lead after 21 minutes. Tom Heaton will be left frustrated because, to be quite honest with you, Burnley looked pretty decent in that first 20 minutes, but they've given away a penalty and they've given away a silly goal. We're in control of this game at the moment, just dictating the play. Is Rusnak. What a reverse ball that is. Through to Hernandez. Can he do anything with it? He's forced back. It's to Ndidi. Now to Rusnak, who cuts past his man. Great bit of play. What a goal. Albert Rusnak. That is phenomenal. That is absolutely incredible from Albert Rusnak. And it was a great bit of play to get us into that position in the first place with the reverse pass. And then the fake shot past the Burnley player. Doing him completely. Albert Rusnak has just done a madness. He's done an absolute madness. And the man that we are expected to sit in the shadows of Vincent Cosielo has fully emerged from those shadows in this episode. It's all attributes that you'd want in a midfielder because it's the amazing pass to set that move in motion and then it's skill and then it's composure to finish. Here comes Rusnak. There's a run being made actually down the side. Oh, it's clipped off the heels. What? That's incredible. It's somehow gone through to Stefaniak with the help inadvertently of Mason. We lose the ball, but that was almost incredible. It's interesting, actually. This episode so far has really questioned the traditional starting 11 that I tend to play in this series. It's provided us with games where we've seen Rusnak play well and Cosiello play badly. And it's provided us with a game as well where we've seen Michael Keane play badly. And Harry Maguire play well. Leon Bailey is going to swing this one in. Try and find a decent area. It's a bit behind everyone, but it's sort of bobbling around. And Burnley do just about get it clear. Not really the area I was hoping that would that would be, really. Unfortunately, maybe Rusnak needed to take that. Oh, that's fallen to, well to Hernandez. And the less said about that, the better. Good interception there from a Burnley player. They seem to be charging players forward quite a bit now, which will leave them susceptible 
to counter-attacks. That's Mason to Shea Adams. Now out wide to Bailey, who have just been talking about. Can he put a good ball into the box? He can. It's to Shea Adams who takes the touch and it just goes wide after bouncing off the post. And then Tom Heaton comes Rusnak now to Ndidi. Back to Rusnak again. Goes for the strike. Oh my. No, I'm done. No, 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 no. What a goal from Albert Rusnak. What has just happened? Albert Rusnak has just exploded onto the scene. That is actually insane. That is actually an incredible goal from Albert Rusnak. He's just stuck it top bins with like no backlift at all. At full time though, it is 3-0, a dominant victory in the end, sparked by some absolute magic from Albert Rusnak. That was just phenomenal. That was absolutely phenomenal. Man of the match in the end went to Onyinye and Didi. Of course it did, but he did get the same rating as Albert Rusnak. Rusnak gets my man of the match, although Ndidi was phenomenal as well. 8.1 for Bailey, 8.4 as well for Odu Bajo, who was very, very solid in the first half, and of course won the penalty for our first goal. New month, and that means new players are getting trained, and after that astonishing performance, Albert Rusnak is definitely in the frame for a training slot. Dave Fraser, Jerry Sonjust, Wilfred Ndidi, and Ebenezer Afori are also going to be trained here today. Obviously, there's some overlap between players that have already been trained, because we've only got so many young players in the squad that actually feature quite a lot. The likes of Fraser, Afori have obviously been trained before, Sonjust is the same. Talking of Dave Fraser as well, he's gone up to a 65 overall, which is not a bad overall at all. And I think I'm going to be starting him in that cup tie in the FA Cup against Yeovil Town. Now then, we're obviously into January, so it's all I just the proverbial shit has just completely hit the fan. I've got about 64 messages. Rick Van Drongelen isn't happy with his role at the club. That's fine. He's going to play against Yeovil Town. Uh, Harry Maguire wants to go out on loan. Okay, that's fine. We've got an offer for David Marshall, which is sort of fine because we're not really using him. So I might get rid of him and try and bring in a cheaper backup goalkeeper. Uh, Audrey Barjo's accepted a contract. Snodgrass has accepted a contract. Right, transfer offer in then for David Marshall. I'm not going to sell him for cut price. We're going to ask for four, four million pounds. Ah, okay, so the whole board, I didn't actually read this properly. The whole city board are actually telling us we have to loan out Harry Maguire. Which is such a pain in the arse. I don't even know. He's, play, he's actually played a decent amount of games. But he still wants to go out on loan. Which is frustrating because he's actually quite a good centre-back. Okay, so I just want to stress the fact that we're not going to be looking at buying players in this episode. I would still like you guys to suggest some players. So in the comments section, if you guys could suggest to me some backup goalkeepers. Um, some centre-backs and also some just young backup players of any position really. It doesn't particularly matter. I'd like to bring in some young talent still. As I always tend to do. So that's absolutely fine. Drop those suggestions in the comments section. We are going to think about selling a few players. Sam Klukas is for sale. David Marshall, we've already got an offer for him from Newcastle. Harry Maguire is up for loan, but it's a short loan, so we can try and get him back as soon as possible. Uh, Newcastle have come back to us and said they do not believe that David Marshall is worth that much and are not going to make a counter offer, which I think is pretty stingy, to be honest with you. Hey, it's FA Cup time, and we've got the graphics as well. We only got to see these for one game last year. For the love of God, can we see them for longer than that this time? We have got a few youngsters on the pitch. Obviously, the player to watch, though, is not a youngster. It's Albert Rusnak after that insane performance against Burnley. He is back in the side as an attacking mid. Here, then, is our squad. Cardinal in goal with Valkvist, Maguire, Van Drongelen, and Ewan McKinley at the back. McKinley's making his debut for the club after being promoted as a youth academy player. And it's Ndidi Mitchell and Rusnak in midfield, and Tep Fraser and Stefaniak playing up front, because obviously Stefaniak has to play this game. Oval definitely targeting Ewan McKinley at the moment which I suppose is understandable. It's his debut. Oh, this is Dave Fraser through. It's going to fall to Ndidi. Goes for the shot. Great save from the goalkeeper. Punched away again by Chris Jacken out for a corner. That was a thunderous effort from Ndidi. Here's Ndidi. Good turn from him. This is through to Dave Fraser, who puts it in the back of the net. And that is 1-0. The Scottish youngster from, from Scotland, obviously. That would make a lot of sense. Gives us the lead. It's his second goal, I do believe, for the club. Assisted by Wilfred and Deedee. Just a little cheeky through ball through. And sliding in, the Scotsman finds the back of the net. Only 17 years of age. Isn't it mad to think that in terms of this series, a 21-year-old in the shape of Linus Valkvist is our most experienced defender. I know Harry Maguire, I think probably in, in real life, is more experienced. But in terms of this series, 
Valkvist has played so many more games than him, and they've hit the crossbar of Yeovil. Goodness gracious me, whilst I was waffling about that, Yeovil hit the crossbar, but they've left themselves open for the counter-attack. Marvin Stefaniak's bursting through. Can he cut inside? Yes, he can. He's got a run being made. It's Rusnak. Can he finish? Oh, the counter-attack not quite finished off. It's now to Dave Fraser, who finds the back of the net and makes it 2-0. The classic counter-attack from Old City. Yeovil Town hit the crossbar. Rusnak with a chance. It falls to Fraser, and he's got a brace, boys. He's got a brace. This is incredible scenes. Rosnack puts it straight to the goalkeeper, but Fraser is there to mop it up and put it into the near post. It is nice to see a team in a lower league actually attacking, though. Um, Charlton Athletic did it as well, to be fair, but a lot of the time when you play a, like, a lower league team or a team that's worse than you on FIFA, they just sit back and defend. Here's Rosnack, though, and flipping Dave Fraser's got no intentions of calming down, trying to get the hat trick. And it is a good first half and a monumental first half for that man there. Youth Academy graduate Dave Fraser, 65 overall, two shots, two goals. All right, here comes Dave Fraser. Good little ball through. That's, oh, that's Dave Fraser. Sorry, that was Mitchell then. Dave Fraser on for the hat trick. It's blocked. It's Fraser again. It almost crosses the line. He's an inch away from getting a, a, a hat trick in the FA Cup. Oh, what a start to whole city life that would have been. It is a 2 0 victory against Yeovil Town away from home. In an episode that's seen us play every single game away from home, we've grabbed two wins out of three, which is not too bad at all. And finally, we progress to the fourth round of the FA Cup. Man of the match, unsurprisingly, does in fact go to the youngster, Dave Fraser with a 9.4. Indeed, he has to be a nailed on contender for player of the episode. Another ridiculous rating. So here is the table then after today's episode. We are top of the table, but only on goal difference at the Manchester City. Both of us on 38, with Leicester in third and United in fourth. Norwich, Burnley and Sheffield Wednesday occupy the relegation places. You are now though seeing the Hull of Fame as well in the background. We've reached a point really in the series where not too much of it is changing. There will be some changes. If Cardinal hasn't taken top clean sheets maker, then he will have done, or he will do soon, sorry. In the top right of the screen though, you guys can now vote for your player of the episode for today. There's some real contenders actually, basically anyone who didn't play in that first game and played in both the second games will definitely be on that list. Maybe even Dave Fraser, he scored two goals in the FA Cup, why not? Chuck him in there, Oju Bajo I'm sure, the likes of uh, Oju Bajo, yeah, and, uh, and Didi as well will probably find himself on that list. And of course, Albert Rusnak after his two goals against Burnley. Nevertheless, that is basically the end of the action for today's episode. If you have enjoyed, then of course make sure to smash the likes button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much, as well as telling me who I should sign in this transfer window, especially when it comes to centre-backs, I feel. It's probably the one position maybe we need to get a player, but really the team's playing very well. We don't need to buy that many players in this transfer for window. It has been a pleasure though ranting at you guys today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. I got